Hello and welcome to IBM Developer YouTube channel. I'm Mofi. And I'm Nick. And we're developer advocates at IBM. So, Mofi, what are you going to teach us today? Uh, so I thought we're going to talk about what containers are and why do we need containers. Um, so before we get started, what do we know about containers already? Uh, maybe Docker? Okay. So yeah, so Docker is one of the most widely used container platform, but it is not the only one. And Docker doesn't necessarily in like create or invent what containers are. So let's first understand why we need containers. Um, so you are building a lot of applications and right. you kind of are using containers in many ways because yeah. you're just like doing Docker build, it just builds your container. But the thing it gives us in terms of like application builders, it gives us a way to package our application where we don't have to worry about uh, how are you going to run it, like the environment it's going to run, because as long as we can give it a container runtime, it's going to just work anywhere we put it. Um, so that is a good thing for developers because it works on my machine problem as kind of gone with containers. And that's number one. Number two is it also allows us to use things like orchestration, like Kubernetes. So this is a lot of the reasons a lot of people are using containers. Um, but what are containers really, right? right. Um, a lot of pictures you're gonna see that container is gonna look like this, like nice box. A lot of times it's like compared with shipping containers with like metal structures. In reality, uh, we have all been told a lie. Yeah. So containers, as we know it, doesn't necessarily exist in a nice shaped box. It, it is not a like an actual thing that is in the co computer. That is a thing just called a container. All it is is uh, Linux namespaces. Do you know what Linux namespaces are? Uh, no idea. Okay. So in Linux, there are a few namespaces. And each process that runs in a Linux uh, processor, it gets some of those uh, attributes from the host. For example, every process knows about some mount space. Mount is like the volumes, like the file system it can look at. It has an idea about the Unix timeshare. This is the host name and its uh, virtual addresses and all these things. It has an idea from the network namespace. So network namespace is basically as you can think of networks, like uh, IP addresses, uh, local hosts and all that things. Uh, it has an idea of inter-process communication, so IPC namespace. This is where one running process can talk to some other running process. In, your, in our computer, any given time, there's like hundreds of processes running, and they can all sometimes pass information between each of them. Uh, they, they have also the idea of user namespace. So the user namespace is in the same Ubuntu machine, you can have uh, multiple users, and uh, they can all be running their own processes, and they, be, they will be running in their own user pro namespace. And finally, you have the process ID. So process ID is if you done like a PS-AX, uh, it will get like a list of all the things with num different PIDs. Right. A PID stands for a process ID. Okay. So when you're doing a Docker container or like a container in general, what you're doing is you're running a process and telling it to use a unique uh, namespace for each of those things. So the process thinks it's the only thing that's running. So when you are running something in container, it's still running in the host OS, host process, um, but it looks like it's the only thing that is running inside the container. From, but from outside, the host actually sees the process just like a regular process. So that is the namespace part of things. And the other side, it has also C groups. And that with C groups uh, in containers, we basically isolate the resources. We give it some resource, some priority, and some control of how much resource this particular process can take up. So, if you have done some Docker work where you can say this process should only get up to like 120 meg megabytes uh, of RAM, that's what we're doing with C groups. And with these two things combined, what we get is a container. Okay. So although we're told a lie, but it's a nice abstraction for where developers don't have to think about this all the time, but this is how containers actually work. Okay. So where, where does this all run? So to run a container, what you need is a container runtime. Okay. And Docker is one of the most popular container runtimes, but there are many other. There's RKT, there's Podman, and uh, there's Containerd as well that Docker actually by default uses underneath it. Uh, Docker gives us very nice APIs to use containers, but this is not the only um, like container platform that is out there. Okay. So do you think you understand the container a little bit better? A little bit. So say I have a Mac, you have a PC, and we're running this uh, Linux container. Like, ha ha does it differ depending on? So in Mac or PC, containers actually run inside a VM. Okay. That is a Linux VM. 
Okay. So although you're running in a Mac, you're actually running containers within a VM okay. within your Mac. Gotcha. Yeah, so everywhere actually running containers right now, you're running Linux containers. Gotcha. Okay, so that was our uh, small understanding of like what containers are. And if you have any more questions, feel, feel free to put it in the comments. And we're going to continue doing more videos on very introductory container and Kubernetes things. Awesome.